And so as part of the TX phase diagrams where we were talking about distillation, how many people have heard of azeotropes? Did y'all talk about them in organic at all? You know, we did a lot of distillation in organic, or I think a lot. I don't know. Y'all tell me how much y'all did here. Yeah, yeah. So it was a common thing that you did. Occasionally, though, the, the condensate is not pure. And it's a real pain. And you have things that, that can't be separated easily. Now, in this particular case, uh, we have a high boiler azeotrope. So let's look at, at what's going on. So distillation is supposed to separate these volatile compounds, you know, in order of their boiling points. But some phase diagrams have this pinch point here. So looking at this phase diagram, it's definitely not ideal, right? Normally, the, the, the uh, you know, the, the vapor and, and uh, liquid lines would go like this, right? From the high boiler down to the low boiler and they would pinch at the pure compounds. But do you see this has a pinch up here? And remember what these lines are. So down below this black line is the, is the liquid phase. So this is liquid. Lig, no, let's do the Q. Yes, so. And then up here is vapor. And so this, this black line is the boiling points of the liquid. Make sense? So if I take this, let's start at A, at this composition A, and we come up here, we raise the temperature, and at this point, A starts to boil. And A has a lower boiling point. Pure A has a lower boiling point. Okay, so this is T A, and this is T B. So those are your boiling points of A and B. Um, and so we're coming up here and, uh, and it boils here and the vapor is, is rich in the more volatile component, A. And so then if it's a fractional distillation, it comes down here and condenses in the column. Then it rolls down the column and reboils and it's more enriched in A. And finally, pure A comes out in terms of the condensate. So I guess the number one point to begin with is that the condensation flask is always downhill on these diagrams, okay? So if we're on this side of this pinch point, then pure A will come out in the, in the, con in, in the collection flask. But what if we're over here? If we're over here, we're enriched in B. And if we boil this solution, it boils a little bit higher than B, okay? It goes up into the column and the vapor that condenses in the fractioning column is enriched in B. And then it condenses and B comes out. So pure B comes out. So that's kind of weird. It kind of depends upon how much A or how much B you have in the pot. What if we're right at this point here? If we boil this one, the composition of the vapor and the composition of the liquid are the same. And that's the definition of an azeotrope. And the whole azeotrope will come over into the collection flask. <clears throat> so we won't be able to separate A and B. So whenever you have an azeotrope, that breaks your ability to separate them. Now we use this in industry a lot. This is a, I mean, perhaps, I don't know if it's a billion dollars, but it's probably close in terms of the amount of money that goes into these azeotropes. Because in vapor degreasing, we clean parts in the vapor zone of a boiling liquid. Well, that could be very flammable if it's a flammable solvent. As you boil the liquid, you have a refrigeration coil, and so you have this, this constantly boiling, re, re, basically refluxing, boiling liquid condensing, boiling liquid condensing. And in that vapor zone, if you put a dirty part, that part is room temperature or cold, all that solvent condenses on the part and dissolves the, the oils and greases and everything and they drip off. And so we can clean parts in the vapor zone. But if it's a flammable solvent, that vapor zone is explosive or somewhere between that vapor zone and the room is explosive. You can pass through an explosive region. So that's very dangerous. We don't want to blow ourselves up. And so we pick chlorinated solvents like trichloroethylene or inpropyl bromide, but those are toxic. And so they want to replace them and they want to keep a chlorinated solvent, but some of the less chlorinated solvents are still flammable. And so they mix in a fluorinated, hey, they mix in a fluorinated solvent to knock back the flammability. 
Well, in this constantly boiling situation, if it's not an azeotrope, it'll separate and the fluorinated compound will leave and your flammable solvent will be in there and you'll move from a non-flammable situation on Monday by Thursday it's a flammable situation and you don't want that in your industry. So azeotropes, these solvent blends are azeotropes. And so many people in, in industry have no idea what an azeotrope is. So you're today, as of today, you're way above a lot of these folks. So that's why they keep calling me and saying, do you have any recent graduates? <laughs> so a lot of my students that come through my research group get jobs in the in industry in the cleaning area where they're applying their chemistry to cleaning parts. And that's why I have the cleaning research group. And azeotropes is a big deal. A lot of times companies will send us research grants or pay, pay for us to do fractional distillations to verify if, uh, if there's an azeotrope or not. So it's, it's easy work. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's look at some other kinds of azeotropes. Notice that the liquid, just follow that liquid line on both of these. And when that pinch point, see up here, this pinch point for the azeotrope. So that's the azeotrope. Azeotropic composition right here. So it looks like 50-50, right? So in these both these cases, it's 50-50. Um, it's not always the case, though, but in this case, 50-50 in this case. So like uh, ethanol water makes an azeotrope and it's 95% water, 5%, oh, is it the other way around? 95% ethanol, 5% water. So you can't distill out ethanol without pulling over 5% water. That's why it's an azeotrope, okay? If you have denatured alcohol, you've removed that 5% water in some other manner. So you may have mixed it with say an organic solvent, they always told us it was distilled with benzene. And so since benzene hates water, the ethanol and benzene uh, mixture distills over and leaves the water behind. And then they distill the ethanol away from the benzene. I think they told us that because they didn't want us to drink it, you know, in college, because we had the pure alcohol, denatured alcohol in the lab. And I said, don't worry, don't drink it because it's been distilled from benzene and you'll get cancer. I don't know if that's true. Uh, they do sometimes denature it in other ways, like denature it from ethanol. So there might be trace amounts of methanol in there, but it's it's 100% ethanol, but it may have trace amounts of whatever it was used to remove that water. So again, I'll, I will scare you and say, don't drink the 100% alcohol we have in the labs. Um, but denatured alcohol is 100% alcohol. Regular distilled alcohol is 95% alcohol. Close enough, right? Okay, so we call the one on the left a high boiling azeotrope. Okay, so since this is above the boiling points of the pure substances, this is called a high boiler. And this one down here is a low boiler. Does that make sense? Look at the pure substances and see where the azeotrope is. If the azeotrope is below the pure substances, it's a low boiling azeotrope. Now, a low boiling azeotrope is what I would call a stable azeotrope because the um, whatever distills over is going to be the azeotrope. Remember, the collection flask has the lowest boiling point in it. So if I'm on this side over here at A1, if I'm right here at A1, it boils at A2, the vapor phase composition is A2 prime, and that goes up into the collection flask and recondenses. So when it condenses, it's down here at A3, and then it boils as it drips down the collection flask, or the, the, the fractioning column, and then it, it um, has a vapor of A3 prime, and that goes higher in the fractioning column. It condenses and drips down, and, and it, it, it does fractional distillation. And the lowest boiling thing is the azeotrope. So this is going to be in the collection flask. Now, if I have moved, if I have removed um, essentially something that has more B in it, and this is the mole fraction of A, right? So I have something that's very rich in A 
and I boil this for a while and I'm removing something that's more rich in B, I'm removing B from the pot. And so the, the pot is always going to migrate up to the high point. So the pot will move this way. In all cases, the pot moves uphill and the collection flask gets the lowest species. So if I'm over on this side, right here, where's the vapor going to be? The vapor phase is going to be concentrated in the, in the near azeotrope region and eventually the azeotrope is going to show up in the collection flask. So the collection flask always collects the downhill piece and the pot moves uphill. So I'm right now removing something that's enriched in A and so the pot will become more and more relatively concentrated in B until it has what looks like pure B. So the pot will move uphill. So pot moves uphill in both cases, just depending on where you start. So if I were to ask you, um, what, what's it, you know, where does the pot go and what's in the collection flask on an azeotropic phase diagram, you've got to know where we're starting. Because if we're starting on the right side of the azeotrope, you have one set of answers. Left side of the azeotrope, you have a different set of answers. So you got to know where you're starting. Okay. That's one thing. And then the other thing too, is it a high boiler or a low boiler? Because for, for a high boiling azeotrope, you can separate one of the pure compounds because this would be in the collection flask. If we're on the left side, this would be in the collection flask. And the pot would move towards the high boiling azeotrope. So really, it's just like two phase diagrams matched together, stuck together side by side. The pot, even on a simple phase diagram, is going to move towards the uphill side, and the, the pure compound that's the lowest boiling point compound is going to be in the collection flask. Just don't forget your, your basic organic distillation. That most volatile compound shows up in the collection flask. Sometimes the most volatile compound, the lowest boiling thing, is an azeotrope. Now, why can't we use, let's say we have a mixture of A and B, and it's a regular phase diagram. A comes out, it's more volatile, comes out in the, in the collection flask. Why can't we then classify that as a purification of B as well? Because the pot will become enriched in B, but the pot always has non-volatile residues in it. So the pot's never pure. In fact, it's a particular type of waste we call still bottoms. And so you, when you're getting rid of waste, you're talking about sources of waste, still bottoms is one that, that waste companies know about, you know, because it contains um, sludge and grease and decomposition products and all of that stuff. So we can never use the pot as a purification place, but we can boil off, um, uh, you know, boil the pot down quite a bit and get whatever pure compounds we can or azeotropes out of the pot. Any questions about this? This is this is pretty much it. Just treat it like two phase diagrams and you got to know which one you're in. Okay. So if I, if I, um, if I draw, if I'm just going to put a point right here, where's my pen? Here we go. All right. So if we start right here, what goes in the, what is going to show up in the collection flask? So I have a solution, I mixed up uh, like, um, I would say 15% A and 85% B. Put that in a pot and I start it to boil. What's going to come out uh, into the collection flask? The what? It's going to be, well, ignore this little B here. Like, like this is a uh, mole fraction of A is zero to one. And so this would be, uh, I guess B on this side and A on this side. So, um, so what, and what would it be called, I guess? What's gonna be in the collection flask? The name for that thing. And our choices would be pure A, pure B, and an azeotrope of A and B. 
It'll be the azeotrope. It'll be the lowest boiling thing. So in the collection flask, it's always the lowest boiler. And so if I'm on this side here and I, and I boil this, then you see the little zigzag. That's happening in the fractioning column, and this shows up in the collection flask. Now, in this particular phase diagram, that is indicating that it's a 50-50 mixture of A and B. So this is about 0.5. So we would know that half the moles in that, that collected fraction is half the moles are A, half the moles are B. It would be a mixture, not a pure substance. And that's the problem with azeotropes, because sometimes people want pure substances and they get some like 95.5 for ethanol or 50-50 for this particular phase diagram. Um, what would the pot go if I, if I pulled that azeotrope out and the, the pot would be enriched in what substance? In B, yeah, it would move towards B. It would get more and more B uh, rich because we're removing mostly A or 50-50 A and B. And so you know, it would move towards B. So you should be able to jump in anywhere. If I jump in over here, let's see, where's my pen? There it is. If I jump in over here and boil that, again, this is on the right, A on the left, is B, if I jump in right here and boil that guy, what's going to be in the collection flask? Pure B. So we can, in this case, purify some of the B out of this mixture. And the pot will go towards the azeotrope, which in this particular phase diagram is around 50-50. So the pot will become 50-50 A and B. And then we won't be able to, re we'll remove the, the amount of B that is, that is greater than 50-50. We'll purify that for a while. But eventually, the, the excess B will be gone, and the temperature of our condensate, uh, condensate will jump up rapidly to the boiling point of the azeotrope. And then the azeotrope will start coming over. And there we're just purifying the highest boiling substance. Okay, yeah. okay so... The, so here's all the different kinds of azeotropes. We have uh, high boiling azeotropes, low boiling azeotropes. We even have double azeotropes, a high and a low and the same thing, where in this particular case is really strange. The, um, the pinch points, there's a high boiler and a low boiler. So it's like three phase diagrams. Uh, we have these things that are called, you know, partially miscible. And so we'll talk about that next. So in this region, uh, there's, there's two phases, so the two two layers in the liquid, and so that's kind of a weird one. You got a two-layer liquid, and if there's a boiling point for that two-layer liquid, and then you've got the vapor compositions and so on. And then here's a here's also a, a low boiling, um, uh, heterogeneous or or partially miscible system. And so these are all the different ones. This is from the CRC handbook. Um, here's the PX phase diagrams. So notice how the PX and the and the TX look like they're upside down from each other. And then this is a neat plot over here. This is the the YA versus XA. So let's see. notice the that whenever the vapor phase YA is equal to the liquid phase composition, that's where the azeotropes are. And so where YA crosses um, that XA line, then you, that's where the azeotropes are. And that's the definition of the azeotrope, when the vapor phase composition and the liquid phase composition are equal. Okay, so that's, uh, that's our um, most complicated TX phase diagrams, the ones with azeotropes. So I'm going to stop the recording on this and then we'll do the lever rule on the next.